Imagine having to spend the rest of your life in prison because an animal, an animal, snitched on you. Well, do I got a story for you. Marty Durham was found unresponsive in his home with several bullet wounds alongside his wife who was alive but seriously injured. Their home looked ransacked and with a couple sharing similar injuries, cops initially thought it was some type of break and gone really wrong. That was until Bud spoke up. Bud was an African Grey parrot and if you know them, you know they're probably the smartest thing in the world with wings. And weeks after his owner was taken from him, Bud started screaming and... I'm just gonna show you what he said. And just like that, wife Glenna Durham became suspect number one and Bud's screaming was believed to be an exact reenactment of the homicide. Especially since Bud would apparently change his voice from male to female while mimicking their final argument. It was also discovered that Glenna had gambled away almost $75,000 and a month before the incident found out that their home was about to be foreclosed because of it. She would be charged and sentenced to spend whatever life she had left inside a cell. And she probably would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for a parrot with PTSD. The mother of the six-year-old boy who shot his first grade teacher in Newport News, Virginia back in January has just been sentenced to two years in prison. 25-year-old Deja Nicole Taylor pleaded guilty to the state felony child neglect charge back in August. Earlier today, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office announced that Taylor would receive a five-year sentence with three years suspended. After her sentence is served, she will have a two-year probation followed by substance abuse treatment, mental health treatment, and parenting classes. If you'll remember, just last month, Taylor was sentenced to 21 months in prison for felony charges. On that charge, she was caught lying about smoking marijuana on the background check that she had filled out to buy the gun that her son used to shoot Abby Werner. And all of this stems back to an incident on January 6, 2023, when Taylor's six-year-old son went into his own first grade class and shot his teacher, Abby Werner in the hand and chest. Zwerner also has a $40 million ongoing lawsuit against the Newport News School District for failing to prevent the shooting after they were warned four separate times on the day of the shooting that the boy had- A two-year-old girl earns over $10 million a year. She was treated like a money machine by her mom. But a few years later, the girl's transformation shocked everyone. Ira Marie Brown was born in 2009. At a very young age, she was very beautiful. She had the appearance of a doll. She had huge eyes and curly blonde hair. The girl had perfect skin, symmetrical facial features, and a deep gaze. Her parents took full advantage of her beauty and sent her into modeling from a very young age. Of course, at that age, a girl shouldn't be walking the runway. But miraculously, Ella performed very well in the face of the task. The girl's incredibly angelic appearance quickly earned her amazing success, and a famous company wanted her to be the face of their advertising video. During Ella's first audition for a fashion show, her parents immediately signed a lucrative contract. Soon, the pictures of this extraordinary little model were a sensation on the internet, with everyone marveling at the charming, adorable Ella. But at the same time, there was a lot of criticism of Ella and her parents. People didn't like the fact that her parents were using the girl so much to make money. In addition, during these years, Ella's career was booming. Soon, she became the highest paid mini model, bringing in huge amounts of money for her family. However, over time, the girl's facial features changed and her childlike innocence disappeared. And as a result, Ella was no longer invited to fashion shows and photo shoots, and she lived the life of a normal teenager. To the envy of all, Ella has become a multi-millionaire, and she is now 14 years old and living an ordinary life. Follow me. Get more true stories every day. Welcome to 12 Days of Crimes. Today is day one. This is 37 year old Melissa Young. She looks nice, right? On Christmas Day of 2013, she walked over to Alan Williamson's home with a gift for him. Inside the wrapped box was a pair of unisex trainers and the Suns edition of the 2014 Zesty calendar. When she gave him the gift, he rejected it and gave it back to her. And that's when something in Melissa snapped and she stabbed him 28 times until he passed away. 
away. She called police and when she was arrested, she said, quote, the power it gave me was amazing. What? Then she claimed that she was possessed and heard voices right before she attacked and because it was a demon that was inside her, she was no longer responsible. Basically, that didn't go well in court and she was arrested and given a minimum of only 20 years in prison, though she has attacked two police officers since her stay and she even went as far as biting one of them. This man ran up to a building, banging on the window, screaming, help me, I'm gonna die. He was killed by the last person anyone expected. Grant Wilson was a 34-year-old Uber driver from Illinois. He had gone to a Walmart in Stokey on the 30th of May 2017, just after 3am to collect a passenger. He was actually already just a block away, so it was quite a quick trip for him to just go to that store. The passenger was 16-year-old Eliza Wasney. She'd actually got a different Uber already to that Walmart just prior to 3am and what the police found later on CCTV stunned them. She had calmly walked through the store, picked up a knife and a machete and left without paying. After leaving, she had requested Grant's Uber and he picked her up. Not long into this second journey, Eliza launched an unprovoked attack on him. He fled the vehicle covered in blood after being hacked with the weapons. He ran up to a condo and desperately banged on the windows and doors, pleading for help. He had multiple injuries to the right side of his arm, torso, head and chest. Police raced to the scene and found Grant almost unconscious. He told police what had happened and described his attacker and then was rushed to hospital where he sadly passed away. Meanwhile, police were on a desperate hunt to find his killer. Now there was a trail of blood leading to Grant's crashed car. They found Eliza a block away, dressed in just a bra and leggings, holding her bloody weapons. She refused to drop them, so she was tasered and arrested. She was charged with first-degree murder and strangely had no history of violence prior. She was given 27 years in prison and has never revealed the motive for her attack. If I can't somehow make you like opossums by the end of this video, you have permission to unfollow me. When the babies get too big for the mother's pouch, they'll start riding along on her back as she looks for food. They don't play dead, they have severe anxiety, and the intense fear makes them pass out and produce a smell like a corpse. Because of its naturally low body temperature, it's rare for them to get rabies because viruses can't survive long in their bodies. And despite what society thinks, they're actually really clean and spend a lot of time grooming themselves like cats. Possums and opossums are actually two different animals. Opossums are found in North America and possums are in Australia, New Zealand, etc. They're not rats, they're actually marsupials, which makes them related to koalas, wallabies, and quokkas, and they're the only ones that are American. If it wasn't for them, you would probably have Lyme disease because they can eat 5,000 ticks in one season, so next time you see one, say thank you. They're also immune to snake venom, which is why they'll shoot face with rattlesnakes and vipers and win. They're clean and intelligent, which makes them surprisingly good pets, and they'll show affection to their owners by licking their skin and rubbing their heads against them. And before you think that's gross, your dog would eat his own poop and lick your entire face without even taking a breath mint, so chill out. This is what it looks like when an opossum is on your side, and I defy you to tell me this isn't adorable. Some chilling updates in the Idaho murders. Police are scouring through bushes as they believe the killer may have been actually watching them and stalking them beforehand. Plus, they don't know what this person is capable of. As it's come to light, a dog was filleted and skinned only weeks before. Investigators have been seen looking through bushes near the residences as part of a probe into whether he actually hid and spied on them beforehand. The search has coincided with a really unsettling revelation that an elderly couple's dog only three miles away was slaughtered by being filleted and skinned. Now, police haven't linked the two cases as there's no evidence to tie them together, although it has raised some serious eyebrows amongst residents with concerns that someone may have tried it on a dog before they moved on to the attack. So far, over 640 tips have been received, 90 interviews have been conducted, yet they have no suspect, no murder weapon, and no compelling leads, just some really eerie coincidences. Authorities are asking all local residences and businesses to please, if they have it, give their CCTV over from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. in hope of finding believe the horrific things that this woman allegedly did with her dog. This is Brittany McClure, and up until a couple of weeks ago, she lived a completely normal life. Brittany is from Michigan here in the United States. She had a boyfriend, and everything seemed to be going great in her life. 
That is, until her boyfriend decided to check on some of the security camera footage from a camera that he had installed inside of the couple's home. Apparently, Brittany's ex-boyfriend had noticed that there had been some movement in the living room in the middle of the day, so he went to go check the footage. And when he went to go watch the footage, he could not believe what he was seeing. As he watched in horror, he saw his own girlfriend, Brittany, performing a act on the dog using her mouth. And she was doing this with a massive smile on her face. And when she was finished, she tried to get the dog, the couple's dog, to perform the same act on her. The detective that's investigating this case noted that while this was going on, Brittany was saying words like, good boy. The detective even stated that in two decades of police work, he had never seen a video quite like the one the boyfriend brought into him. Now, Brittany was arrested and charged with a number of different things. Obviously, this is considered animal abuse, and this case is just being brought to trial or whatever the process is right now. So we're going to find out more about all of Brittany's devices and exactly what she's been doing to her dog in the house. But I just cannot believe this story, and I cannot even fathom what her boyfriend must have felt when he just went to go check the security camera video and saw that absolutely disgusting, shocking, horrifying, and yeah, just ugh. After four months behind bars, Ruby Frankie just pled guilty to four counts of aggravated child A. She was initially charged with six counts, but two of those were dismissed under the plea agreement. Her law firm released a statement calling Ruby a devoted mother and basically placed all the blame on her co-defendant, Jody Hildebrandt. But in this plea agreement that Ruby signed, she admits to doing horrific things to her children. Ruby admits she tortured her son from May 22nd through August 30th by forcing him to do harsh physical labor in the summer without adequate water. Her son suffered repeated and serious burns that blistered. He was denied food and isolated from people without access to books, notebooks, or electronics. After the son attempted to escape in July, the punishments got worse. His hands and feet were regularly bound, sometimes with handcuffs. Ruby also admitted to kicking her son while wearing boots, holding his head under water, and smothering his airways with her hands. She treated her nine-year-old daughter similarly. She forced her to work outside, run on dirt roads barefoot, and go without food and water. Ruby also repeatedly told her children they were evil and possessed, and that these punishments were acts of love. She'll be sentenced on February 20th and could face a maximum of 15 years for each count. Jody Hildebrandt will be in court on December 27th. A man who took part in an ice-fueled sexual escapade with sheep inside a school shed was not in his right mind at the time of the offence, a court has been told. George Danicus, age 44, had been awake for five days when he was caught with his pants down by officers after having sex with a male sheep at St. Mary's High School in Sydney's West. Teaching staff had caught him on CCTV after they suspected that someone had been breaking into the milking shed after hours. Police found Danicus with his pants down, sexually engaging with the male sheep, while a female goat was observed to be in the state of shock beside them on May 18. Danicus pleaded guilty at Penrith District Court to damaging property, bestiality, possessing bestiality material, break and enter, and possessing an unauthorized firearm before he was sentenced to over three years behind bars. The court was told that he was recorded herding two goats into a gated area on May 6th before he was filmed a week later walking around the same shed naked from the waist down. When officers found Danicus 11 days later, he told them that he was in the shed at the time looking for his phone and that he had removed his pants to urinate. A phone belonging to Danicus was found in the sheep paddock on June 24th but it only added to his troubles when police searched it. Content pertaining to bestiality was stored on the phone, alongside a photo of him holding a pump-action shotgun, which he did not have permits for. Danicus' methamphetamine use leading up to the arrest, combined with his affinity for enjoying sheep on the side, led to a state of mind in which he did what he did, his defense lawyer told the court on Tuesday. His lawyer shared that Danicus had told a psychiatrist that he was only attracted to animals while under the influence of the drug because it increased his sex drive. Danicus did eventually admit to his psychiatrist that he was pretty much into bestiality after seeing it on the internet, but that he still liked women. The court heard that Danicus was diagnosed with schizophrenia and that he had stopped taking his prescribed medication in the weeks before his actions. Danicus was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for his offenses. The mother placed a recording device in her nine-year-old daughter's backpack to document the bullying incidents. However, she is now facing the possibility of imprisonment. Mina, the nine-year-old, is in the fourth grade. One day, she tearfully told her mother that she didn't want to go to school anymore. 
She even tried to persuade her mother not to send her to school in the future. As a single mother, Sarah has almost no one else to rely on. She has been raising her daughter alone for years. Even before Sarah reached adulthood, she experienced bullying due to her weight and darker skin. Now she doesn't want her daughter to go through the same thing. Mina revealed a heartbreaking and frustrating answer. She has been bullied at school for several months, and the girl's heart can no longer bear it. Some children pushed this innocent girl down and then beat her abdomen so hard that she curled up in pain and cried. Shockingly, none of the school staff was willing to help the little girl, and they did not inform her mother. Such bullying incidents frequently occur to Mina. Sarah has discussed this matter with the elementary school management several times, but every attempt has been in vain. Therefore, the single mother decided to take a brave step. She opened the recording device and placed it in her daughter's backpack to collect sufficient evidence. Surprisingly, Sarah will face even greater danger. Follow me to learn about what happens next in part two. Zoologist Adam Britton has pleaded guilty to multiple charges, including bestiality. The prominent crocodile specialist from Darwin has pleaded guilty to 60 charges, including bestiality, involving the torture, rape, and killing of pet dogs, as well as charges relating to possessing, accessing, and transmitting child abuse material. The zoologist, who had built an international name for himself, previously had his identity hidden by a suppression order, which has now been lifted. In a rare case, the NT Chief Justice excused security officers and sheriffs from the courtroom, while the full facts were put on the record to limit those exposed to the distressing details. The Supreme Court heard Britain had a sadistic sexual interest in animals and that his conduct resulted in the intentional killing of at least 39 animals. Prosecutors told the courtroom Britain owned a shipping container on his property equipped with filming equipment that he had referred to online as his torture room. Dozens of Britain's online messages were aired to the courtroom where he would talk to others about his offending and disseminating images and recordings. In one message, Britain tells someone, I had repressed it in the last few years, I let it out again and I can't stop, I don't want to. It was heard that Britain used Gumtree to source new dogs from owners who would often check in on their pets that had been given away a lot of the time due to travel or work commitments. Britain was remanded in custody and his case was adjourned until December. This might be the craziest cult dog I've ever seen. This girl let her recently out of jail father move into her college dorm with all of her friends. He managed to manipulate all the kids to the point where they cut off their friends and family members and moved in with him into a tiny apartment that he didn't even own in New York. He then psychologically abused them to the point where they were confessing to crimes that they never even committed. And on top of that, he was sexually abusing them and sex trafficking. He had them under his spell for almost a decade and as you can see in some of this footage he did horrific things to them and a lot of it was caught on camera or recorded. It is mind-blowing to me that a bunch of teenagers just fell for this dad who controlled them for a decade. It's also astounding to me that he lived on a college campus and the school never found out and never did anything about it. This is definitely one to add to your list. Let me know in the comments what you think about this documentary and hit follow for more things to watch. Five things you didn't know about the killer clown, John Wayne Gacy. Some of his victims had been in his basement for so long that their bones had fused together. It took two whole years to put together the full skeletons. Some of his 33 victims are still unidentified. Breaks my heart to think that some of their loved ones might think that they ran away or are missing on purpose. Like many serial killers, he suffered a head injury. At 11 years old, he was under a swing set and got hit on the head. It formed a blood clot that wasn't identified until he was 16. Over that five years, he suffered blackouts that went away once the blood clot was treated. His mother's underwear kept going missing, and she found out that her young son John had been stealing her underwear and burying it underneath the house. This behavior stopped for a while, but once he turned 15, he started stealing neighborhood girls' underwear off of their clotheslines and burying it underneath the house as well. Given where the majority of his victims were found, it's extremely chilling. He may not have acted alone. In a 1992 interview, he claimed that he had an accomplice. Normally, I'd say this is just a Hail Mary to try to get the blame off him. One of his victims that survived who was key in getting a conviction for him, his name was Jeff Rignall, but he lived to tell his story. He was trapped in the John Wayne Gacy house and suffered unspeakable things. For whatever reason, he was dumped in Lincoln Park. 
He said that when he was drifting in and out of consciousness, sometimes it sounded like there was somebody else in John Wayne Gacy's house. He told psychologists that during some of the murders, someone else was there to help him, but this was widely believed to be a symptom of schizophrenia. Thanks for watching, and if you like true crime, follow my account. Light out everybody. It is if I can't make you like rats a little more, you can go ahead and unfollow me. Rats are ticklish and they actually giggle when you do it, it's just that it's so high pitched that you would normally never hear it. Bison rats blush when they're happy and you can tell when their ears become a more vivid pink. Rats are extremely clean and they spend a lot of time grooming and washing themselves. Not only that, but they bond by cleaning each other which is called allo grooming and for a rat the ultimate sign of trust is letting someone else do their hair. Rats are also neat freaks that will occasionally organize their food into piles. Pet mice can form strong emotional attachments with humans. Not only will rats react with excitement when they hear their owner's voice, they'll try to groom their human friend as if they were a rat in their own family. And these bonds can easily last a rat's entire life. They're not only highly intelligent, but they can show empathy and compassion. In an experiment, one rat was held in a special cell-like device and one was put outside of it. And every time, the rat on the outside got extremely nervous and tried to free the other rat even though he himself had nothing to gain by doing so. They got racially profiled because it turns out they're actually not responsible for the plague that clapped 200 million people. Scientists believe people caught the plague from other people, not rats. Rats sing like songbirds when they're really happy. Hope this helps. Do you notice anything strange about this picture of these Nottingham newlyweds? Debbie Starbuck was last seen alive six days after her wedding. It was April 2010 and the new bride was just 41 years old. She'd got married to 36-year-old Jamie Starbuck, and as you can see in their pictures from their wedding, they were beaming. However, just a week after this photo was taken, Debbie faced a tragic end. Jamie was divorced and met Debbie online. The pair lived together in a house in Nottingham. Debbie was self-employed, and after her mum sadly passed away, she inherited over £100,000. Debbie's friends and family alerted police to a potential problem two years after last seeing her. They hadn't actually heard from Debbie properly in a while. They'd had a few emails from her here and there, but hadn't actually spoken to her on the phone. After Debbie and Jamie had got married, they believed that the pair had gone abroad. Investigators started looking into the pair's whereabouts and found that Debbie's passport had actually expired. Interestingly, money had been transferred from Debbie's account to Jamie's. Police discovered that Jamie was living a lavish life, traveling all over the world, but there was no sign of Debbie. It transpired that Jamie had travelled to a total of 32 countries within 31 months. He'd left the UK to travel to Amsterdam in 2010 just after his wedding and was keeping a travel blog. He documented his travels and apparently what him and Debbie were up to. Now his wife's family were also receiving emails from her and by the sounds of things she was living a absolutely dream life. In Jamie's final blog post he wrote, I left the UK a long time ago in search of, well, in all honesty I was running away, from life and responsibility, justice and my past. It turned out he'd been using his wife's passwords to pose as her and make it out like she was still alive when he knew she was dead. He'd killed her a week after their wedding, dismembered her and then burned her remains. Shockingly, police found an entry in his computer stating, I had planned for it to be quick, I never expected you to be so durable. He had spent his deceased wife's money on his lavish travels and subsequently was arrested. Police captured him as he stepped off a plane from Brazil. He was jailed for life. I'm at the point now where it's like, why do I even bother? I like to think sometimes, you know, I'm a Terminator or something. Despite, despite, um, you know. The man you just saw compare himself to the Terminator is 22-year-old Jake Davison. And on August 12, 2021, he murdered five people in cold blood in England. So online, Jake had a presence on YouTube and various other platforms where he was a hardcore misogynist and incel. He was constantly talking about his hatred for women, how he couldn't get himself a girlfriend, and he involved himself heavily in various incel services. So like I just said, Jake posted lots of sexist content all over the internet, and he was very active on Reddit where he connected with other misogynists and incels. He specifically talked on Reddit a lot about how much he hated his mother. Now, the day before this violent incident occurred, Jake lost his Reddit account access because of some disturbing messages he sent a 16-year-old girl in America. He was trying to get her to come over and have relations with him in England where technically it would have been legal. But other users on Reddit who saw this behavior encouraged the girl to go to the police, but she didn't. She just went to Reddit and his account was then removed. 
Jake, when he was younger, was diagnosed with ADHD and autism, and throughout his whole life, he struggled with his mental health. That was something that his family, specifically his mother, always encouraged him to get help with. And although throughout his lifetime he received some minimal treatment, he never got the care that he really needed. In 2017, he applied for a firearm license. In 2018, he was granted one. But in 2020, he was arrested for having a row with two youths. I don't know what that exactly means. His weapons were then confiscated, but in 2021, they were returned to him a month before the shooting. But on August 12, 2021, something snapped within Jake. That morning, he had a verbal altercation with his mother, and he then retrieved the shotgun from his bedroom and murdered his mother in their house. Afterwards, he walked out into the street and just started shooting anybody he could see. He first shot and killed a three-year-old girl and her 43-year-old father who were out walking on the street. He then shot through the front door of a neighboring house, injuring two people. And he then walked over to a park where he murdered a 59-year-old man. Jake then kept on walking, and at this point, police reports were coming in, but they couldn't figure out exactly where he was. He then encountered a 66-year-old woman outside of a hairdresser's who he shot and killed on the spot. Afterwards, he allegedly told someone who was right there on the scene, there's nothing to worry about, mate. So after all of this, Jake then continued to walk around. He threatened three more people, didn't end up shooting them. And when the police were finally arriving to stop him, Jake ended up taking his own weapon and taking his own life. This was a really tragic story, especially because gun violence and shootings like this are so rare in the United Kingdom. And this guy's online history before this crime is incredibly disturbing. 